Ask the Podcast Coach for August 20th, 2022. Let's get ready to podcast. There it is. It's that music that means, hey, it's Saturday morning. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm Dave Jackson from the school of podcasting.com. And joining me right over there is the one and only Jim Coulson from TheAverageGuy.tv. Jim, how's it going, buddy? Greetings, Dave. Happy Saturday morning to you. A little rough start for me. I was up till 2 a.m. with a group, a, a meetup group in the Philippines. So that was their afternoon. It was their Saturday afternoon. Ah, jeez. Like that. So 2 a.m., <laughs> like a midnight start, 2 a.m. I don't do it a lot, but man, it, that makes for a rough Saturday morning. So this morning, more than ever, the coffee's important. <laughs> Let's get that stuff going. That's not it. That's it. There we go. And of course, that coffee pour is brought to you by Mark over at podcastbranding.co. Wayne Henderson from the Packers podcast was featured this week on Amazon Music. And people may have said, hey, wow, like that artwork is really great. And of course, where did it come from? Mark over at podcastbranding.co. Because not only is Mark a great uh, graphic artist, he's also a podcaster. And he's going to take the extra time to sit down with you, figure out kind of the vibe of your show so that your artwork matches everything else that's going into your podcast. And if you need like a a marketing audit. Mark can do that. He'll go over your website. He'll go over anything that you want to be in front of your audience because, you know, you got to remember they they see you before they hear you. The best part about it, of course, and I joke about this, but it's actually true. And that is Mark is Canadian and he's very polite. So check him out. Podcastbranding.co. Oh, that's a lot better. <laughs> a lot better with a little coffee. Big thanks to our friend Dan Lefeb over there at Based on a True Story Podcast, based on a true story podcast.com. If you're looking for something new and something smart to listen to, Dan has oh, well over 200 episodes now available for you, especially if you're like a movie geek and, and you're always kind of like, hmm, I wonder what the backstory behind this is. He's got a lot of them out there. You should check it out today if you need something to listen to, based on a true story podcast.com. And I swear I'm going to bring this back to podcasting. I'm on Amazon and they're throwing up the trailer for the movie 13 Lives. It's about these uh, teenage boys who got stuck in a cave. And I watched the trailer and it was like just classic storytelling. Like, here, let's show you pictures of these cute little boys playing soccer. Okay, that tugs on your heartstrings. Oh, but what's going to happen? Oh, they go in a cave. And then you hear somebody say, oh, it's just an old tourist trap, uh, you know, so that makes you feel safe. And then, oh, but now it rains. It's just this whole, you know, a story is kind of like, okay, such and such happened, but you're not going to believe it. But then this happened and you're not sure if they're going to make it, but they might. But and then this happened and blah, blah, blah. And so I watched the movie. It is two and a half hours long. That was one I was glad to be watching on a computer because I have a plug in for Chrome that lets me pretty much speed up any video. And uh, it was a good movie. And uh, it's also like watching a Superman movie or any kind of superhero movie because you kind of know how the movie's going to end. It's not like, eh, and 13 kids went into the cave, and guess what? They all died. Oh, doggone. No, it was, uh, but it was classic storytelling. If you, if you, that's welcome to being the, the life of a podcaster. You don't just watch movies, you go, hmm. That's an interesting plot twist. Ooh, they're adding more stakes to the story now. I can see where this is going. <laughs> it's just dissecting the whole thing. But if you are new to the show, I'm going to start this. Uh, we're we're playing with an app this morning called Wisdom, which I heard good news and bad news about. Uh, I'm going to try to get this going live. Save. I did that. Maybe I oh start talk. There we go. I hit start talk and it's not letting me start my talk. So Here's Wisdom has the ability, are we going to broadcast to Wisdom? Like, isn't the whole idea of Wisdom to short little messages back and forth? Well, it's supposed to be, but you can also go live. And that's what I thought we would do today. I see other people going live, but I'm now wanting to go live. I was like, oh, I'll do this on Saturday. Sounds like a great use of this. I'll just go live. And I what, I see where there's a button that says start talk. And I did that. And it says choose up to two tags. And I did that. I agree. 
And when I click on start talk again, nothing happens. When I click on podcasting, nothing happens. I can click on save. But in terms of actually starting my talk, I agree to the content and blah, blah, blah. There's no button for me here to say start. And the the other kind of bad news about this is I was, um, I thought that, I mean, I'm going to go on discover. Nope, there's all sorts of other people on here. And when I go home, there's live. I have this muted because there's actually a guy live now. I can mute them. I can click on more. But there's no, like, I want to go ooh, at the bottom. Is this me? Meet Amazing Minds. That's chats. I know. Stunning audio, Dave. Thank you. So weird. It looks so easy this morning. I'm like, oh, I'll just click on the start talk button. And away we will go. And I don't know why it's not letting me. But... uh all right, maybe we're not going to use wisdom this morning. <laughs> so this is a, it's a cla- here's a great example of this. Here's how we're going to tie this into podcasting. Oh, good. Oh, good. I'm going. All right. Can't wait. You're like, Can't you're wait looking at, <laughs> you, you got a podcast and you go, you know what? This podcast is great. It's awesome. But you don't get any, you don't send it through a test person. You don't get somebody mm-hmm. like, this is the equivalent of they let all their friends and family Mm-hmm. use the app, but they didn't let somebody else use it to go, yeah, I can't figure out how to talk on this thing. I click on the start talk button because that makes sense. It says, you know, oh, I need a chalk. Ah, that's it. I need a title. Talk title mm-hmm. up to 80 characters. Okay, here we go. That's maybe uh, that's now you're making progress. Now you're yeah, making- but if you if you don't have somebody that's not related to you, listen to your podcast, and uh, that that could be a problem. So here, you know, I'm not that close to this. I, I thought I knew. Okay, here we go. Let's go. We're missing a title. But here's the thing. Maybe not have dark gray text on a black gra- background. It's easy to uh, do don't, that. Don't try to blame it on somebody else, Dave. <laughs> take, take, uh, take, right. the, or take the ownership for it. All right. So we, we are now live on Wisdom and talking away. So we will, I will keep my eyes here, and uh, that's set to go. It's tied in via Wi-Fi on the uh, Roadcaster 2. So if somebody comes up, I will uh, let you know. What, what do you think the what do you think the listening base is out there on Wisdom? I don't know. If somebody wants to go to the Apple app uh, or Google store and see how many downloads there are, mm. um, see, then Randy has the problem. He goes, I can't even get people I'm related to to listen <laughs> to my show. How am I supposed to get people probably that aren't related? Story. Probably two story. Yeah, my, uh, my family looks at me with, Great contempt when I whenever I say the word podcast, like oh god, he's going to start talking about it again. My, you know, they just like they're not interested. They're just like whatever. My, my favorite thing ever is I don't know if you ever get pulled to an event from your wife's work. Do you ever have to go to those? Oh yeah, I'm going to one this yeah. afternoon. It's yeah. always great because you don't know anybody there mm-hmm. and this and that. And so I'm standing there next to my my now ex wife. And it's all doctors and nurses. So they're talking in a completely different language that I don't understand. And this guy walks up to me and goes, hey, are you the podcast guy? <laughs> and I look over and my my wife rolls her eyes and goes, yeah, I'm going to go get something to drink. I'll see you in 20 minutes. <laughs> She's like, oh, he pulled his chain. Yeah. He's just going to ramble on yeah. for that. So yeah. um, uh, Rob asks, hey, is uh, Wisdom an iOS only app? I am using it on iOS. I don't know. I think it's Wisdom. No, they have app. both. Yeah, they have both. both. Yeah, so both. Wisdom. Audio is there. Wis- yeah, is there? Uh, if you want to do it with a computer, and of course they have both Android and iPhone. Yeah, and DRS. But wasn't there some sort of controversy after the whole thing was over? I think it would be interesting to include that in the oh in the movie. Oh, she's talking about the thirteen lives. There is a little bit of a controversy over Wisdom. And that is, I heard this from James Cridlin. I was listening to Podland. And James, in addition to being a a journalist, is pretty geeky, as in, like, he writes code and stuff. And uh, he he can tell when somebody spams him where that spammer got his email. They're somehow dynamically created. And um, he, uh, he said that... Uh, Wisdom had already spammed him twice. I got two messages as well. That's how I got on it. So on one hand, we hate spammers, but on the other hand, it worked in my case. And uh, he said, but Wisdom got his email from Listen Notes. And I was like, hmm. And Listen Notes is 
starting a free media host. You ready for this, Jim? Listen to their their savvy list of features. You can get, I think it's called Listen Host or Host Notes or something like it's some free thing. But uh, for nothing, when you pay nothing for free, you get these awesome features. Features like absolutely no stats at all. And you have to use your own domain or it doesn't work. Oh. Sign up today. That's and convenient. Uh, That's I super was convenient. like, why wouldn't you just join that? Yeah, I was like, sign up today. But uh, Kim is hopping in from uh, many things. She's, I know, previously the queen of Toastmasters101.net. Uh, and I forget the name of your new show. The new one is called Writing Again. Writing Again at what website? Uh, writingagain.life. There we go. Awesome. Well, thanks for popping in. What can we help you with? Well, it's interesting that you mentioned Toastmasters 101 because that's what I'm calling about. I have finally found a replacement oh. and somebody else is going to take over the show. Now I can handle moving Blueberry to a different account. That's not the problem. It's the whole 301 redirect that I have to do because I am taking away my website and it's... Uh, they're going to put it all onto pod page, which is good. I can help them do that. But Where... since I've been running this through PowerPress since the very beginning, I don't know what I need to do to change the feed from my website yeah. to the pod page. Where Where are they going to host the files at? They're leaving them on Blueberry. Mm. Okay. So they're going to, but that's going to be on, how does that work? Are you transferring it? I am changing the email address for the account and the password. And it's the one, it's okay. their email address, their password. And I am done with Blueberry. They're going to pay Blueberry themselves. Got it. Okay. So in Blueberry, the media host, yes. there, is, there is a feed for that account. Most people never, ever use it because they're using PowerPress. Right. So what you want to do, and this is going to be, it sounds a little confusing. You're going to install, there's a plugin, oddly enough, called, I'll have to give you the link because I know we have a thing on Libsyn about it. But there's a, it's something ridiculous like redirect, I think is the name of the plugin. But I'll get this to you. And you set it up so that in redirect, it's like, where do you want to redirect the audience? And you're going to redirect them to the Blueberry feed. Um, because that way, the beauty of that is it doesn't matter what the website is because okay. pod page isn't going to give them a feed pod page is not a media host. And so you redirect it to, um, blueberry. I would leave your website up a month to be a nice person. That'll give people, uh, 30 days to hit that redirect, which will then send them over to blueberry. And in theory, the apps will update and everybody will then look at the blueberry feed for that uh but that's that's basically how you do it so and i don't have to go to any of those directories and re-enter it in spotify and uh stitcher I'm trying to think if there are any other ones i haven't had a single listen in stitcher in more than three years well here's the thing about stitcher i know this because i i'm doing a presentation on going beyond your podcast media host stats uh, mm -hmm. Stitcher, if you go back a year, well, like you said, in three years, that I don't know what's going on, but they're not displaying any stats because I'm seeing Stitcher in my Libsyn dashboard. So I know people are listening over there. They're just like their stat engine broke at Stitcher and nobody seems to care. Um, so, okay. Uh, uh, but anyway, you will need to update it and Stitcher. If you're on tune in, you need yes. to ma manually do that. And then Daniel says Google Podcasts as well. So. Okay. And that's the tricky one because that is probably under your email for Google Podcasts. So you can be a nice person and go in and update that. And uh, that's a fun one. Amazon is the only website I've seen that makes it really easy to transfer a podcast from one person to another. Okay. It, so, but, so. And, and how you test it is, and you want to do this. So the minute you put in the redirect, so you want to go to your feed and you should see the address bar at the top of your, you know, where the address is, you should see that update to the blueberry feed. 
And if it doesn't, go back and fix it because you're, whatever you're blasting people to is the wrong address. Right. So um, I had somebody this week at Libsyn that just blasted their audience into a website. And I don't know, I don't know what happens in that case because that's Yeah, wrong. that doesn't sound good. I was like, that's a good case of maybe you're blasting your audience into a place that you can't get them back from. Okay. But. Well, um, perhaps what I will do with these others, it, um, Spotify, Stitcher, et cetera, is to um, ha- help the person who is now going to be running the show to start doing the updates there under her account rather than yeah. mine. So I don't have to change things. I can just let her become yeah, the, she, the new feed owner yeah put her name in like in in the blueberry feed she should have her email and when yes. you go into spotify and you go to claim it it'd be like hey i i think this podcast is already in here and you go yes it is and then it'll send an email to uh whatever email is in the feed which would be hers right she she can claim it and at that point they'll put that show in her spotify dashboard okay so but it's fun. 301 redirects are, that's the one I go, don't multitask when you do that. Don't be watching, you know, America's Got Talent or something in the background or whatever. Old okay. Star Trek reruns. Seinfeld. Seinfeld, yeah. You kind of want to give that one your undivided attention because if you mess up, it's it's not good. Right. So Well, I have been talking with these people for more than a year about surrendering this. Mm -hmm. And they finally got back to me and my hosting for my website ends on September 5th. Okay. So they don't get a full month, but I'll get most of a month. There you go. Or part of a month. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Thank you, Jim, for the uh, suggested video. I always appreciate being able to come and ask you guys questions. There you go. Good luck. It's Mike Dell. So you'll, he he doesn't. Oh, well, Mike Dell. He's my hero. <laughs> he is. He's he everybody's is. hero. All right. Thanks, Jim. All good right. See you. Good seeing you. Have a good, good weekend. Good seeing you too. Uh-huh. Yep. You bet. We'll see you. Bye. Yeah, three hundred one redirects. They're they're fun. I just threw up a little bit in my mouth thinking about that. Just well, here's be... the fun like, thing. There's so much work to it. Like that's the thing. You're you're right. You have got to unwind that. You've got a whole. And you know, you really got to. Your advice was good. Take it one thing at a time. Like really focus on the, the, you know, the, the website and getting that 301 in place, get that in and working and make sure it's doing its thing. Then worry about all the ancillary, you know, redirects that are out there and really take your time with them and do them one at a time. Cause it's not, it's not straightforward. It's not easy. And it's not instant for sure. I had one this week that I was like, I think we can do this. And it was, there was no way around. It was going to be ugly. I want to say the website was something like cast at net, And it's one of those, like, we're a business podcast directory. Nobody has the feed. We're going to give you and grow and blah, blah. We're going to grow your audience for you. And I'm like, no, nobody does that. Quit saying it. Uh, and so this person had left lips and went over there. And this is where can we, I, I need almost like Dave gets his nerd on, on this behind the scenes in a podcast. There's a thing called a GUID. And it's like graphic user interface, duh. I don't know what it stands for. But anyway, it's the social security number of that episode. And there are two things that you hope that your new media host doesn't do. One is change your file name, although many of them do. And then hopefully, if they understand podcasting, they won't update the GUID because it's the social security number of the episode. And that particular company changed both. And the person was there was like, oh, yeah, we shouldn't have left Libsyn. So they're like, we're coming back. But they had done like 45 more episodes. Done damage. And if I just re-imported them, it yeah. would have duplicated yeah. everything because they're like, oh, here's your, here's your ID number. Oh, that's weird. Mine's different. Well, come on in. So I had to take their RSS feed, which, again, proved that this company didn't know anything because just looking at their feed – literally locked up my computer. Like, I don't know what it was doing, but it took forever to update. I grabbed the all their gibberish from their RSS, put it in Notepad, deleted all the previous Libsyn episodes. So it was only the things that they had done when they weren't in Libsyn, and threw that on Mediafire as an RSS feed, and then imported it into Libsyn. And I told them, I said, okay, the good news is you don't have duplicates 
in your hosting account. The bad news is anybody that subscribed to your show when you're on the new platform in the app will probably have duplicates in the app. There's, it was just a matter of like, here's the way to do this. That's going to give you the least amount of uh, duplicates. So that was uh, icky. And that I was just like, man, this just reeks of like a company that got into podcasting because it's hot. Hey, let's get into that. There's lots of money over there, guys. Let's go. And I was like, oh, they just, it's like when Kajabi started. I don't think Kajabi still offers 301 redirects. It's a great marketing tool. It's a little overpriced in my book. But when they're like, hey, we do podcasts now. And I'm like, oh, let me see if you guys understand anything about it. And then you go over there and you're like, no, no, you don't. So uh, if you're watching live and you can do just what Kim did, she just went to askthepodcastcoach.com slash join, jumped right into the video. Keep in mind, if you don't want to turn on your camera, that's fine. Uh, but uh, that's how you, you come in and ask your question. You can also ask it at askthepodcastcoach.com slash live, where we've got 27 people hanging out in the chat room at the moment. So if you have a question, feel free to uh, throw it in there. Um, oh, Uncle Marv has my new favorite pet peeve. Uh, I, re I received an email yesterday. And he says that, um, mm -hmm. says, there we go. Um, did you get the last email I sent about featuring your podcast in order to find more guests? Yeah, that's another. I, I, here's my thing. I mean, on one hand, I often never reply to these. So I kind of get that they're like, hey, you didn't open my last email, so I'm going to bug you in case you missed it. Uh, and so I've, I've now just, I have a, a text expander that's just like, thank you for your inquiry. I'm not interested at this time. And then boom. And then if the, what the problem is, most of these are not an actual person. And so when I get the third one, there's one, um, there's a really popular, I think it's called the event planner plugin for WordPress. And at one point I was going to use it. In fact, in one case I did use it, but I'm not on WordPress for most of my sites anymore. And I have unsubscribed from that email list no less than four times that, you know, the last time I even said, Hey, like take me off this list. I've unsubscribed and you keep emailing me and they're like, Oh, sorry. And then this week in came another one. So I was like, okay. And now you're spam. Like I'm going to hit the spam button. Cause I realized that in theory, when you hit the spam button in Gmail, that, that should kind of not only stop them from showing up in your inbox, but kind of gives you a, a, a black eye in the eyes of Google to where, they might start sending you to the spam folder. And so I'm trying to be a nice guy and not label you spam right out of the uh, the list. But it's like, come on. So, Jim, what do you do with all I, your... I like to send him the note that says, no, I didn't get the first one. That's all I say. Nope, <laughs> didn't, get, didn't get it. Um, no, actually, yeah, I get a lot of those too. Uh, but a few of them have actually turned into guests. Mm. You know, and, and I'll take a... If it, you know, you know you know when it's bad like hey i listened to this episode and they put the link and it's an episode from you know nine years ago and you're like okay they just they just pulled this link no one would no one at least on my show would want to go to a show that was nine years ago or maybe maybe you never know but um and then read through their you know oftentimes read through what they're what they're offering a little bit and uh every once in a while i'll get one i just got one kind of yesterday that I was like oh this is a solar power company that's doing some things and they actually have a website and they're doing some stuff and they have a list of, you know, of who they are and who's part of their company and the CEO name matches, <laughs> you know, you're like, Oh, okay, this is, this is all good. Maybe this is legitimate. And you know, I'm, we've talked about this before. I'm in a spot where I'm accepting more guests. And so I'm a little more open to that than I've been in the past. And I've had some really good ones come in that way. So Listen, what I'm not saying like, okay, pay attention to every single one now. And if you're not in that mode, if you're not looking for guests or you're not you're not looking for their pitch, yeah, certainly just delete it. But I'm I'm in a spot now where I'm kind of open to some of those kinds of things. And you know, I wouldn't have gotten, you know, we had we had Jamie Simonoff from from Ring show up on Home Gadget Geeks years nice. ago before he was big. And um sold it to Amazon for a gajillion dollars. Yeah. You know. Um, you, sometimes you get those, I, I had Mark and I forget Mark's last name, uh, from Zapier. So, you know, Zapier, the mm -hmm. automation, oh. we had Mark on before Zapier was a thing and they, they were just four college grads out of the university of Missouri, out of Columbia. And he came on the show and was very, was a very, very good guest. And we had a lot of, you know, conversation. Now I've asked him to come back and I can't get him to answer <laughs> my email because 
he's a big deal now, right? I'm sure he's too busy to come on Home Gadget Geeks. But um, every once in a while, I think, you know, depending on your podcast, that you might you might just pay a little bit more attention. I know they're, I, listen, I know they're maddening. I totally understand it. So don't, I don't, don't email me like, Jim, you don't understand. No, I do understand. But um, I, I've gotten a few good guests out of them. So they're not all, they're not all bad, Dave, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, I got one this week and I said, wow, this is horrible timing. I'm going to be out of town next week, blah, blah, blah. And he works with Brian Ibbett from Coverville and it's an, a guy that runs a podcast network and he had about three different topics. I'm like, can we talk about all of these? So it was really cool to, uh, to get those. We actually have um, 20 people listening on wisdom and one is waiting. So we're going to bring, I'm going to unmute the uh, Wi-Fi here in chat too, but welcome wisdom. All right. So uh, cool. So um, John biz is joining. So uh, here we go through. It gives me a countdown. Uh, three, two, one, and John is on. John, how are you? Good morning. How are you? How are you? Oh, we're doing great. What can we help you with? Um, well, are you you're new to the platform, or I'm this, very new to no? the. This is the first time I've used oh. it. You're, and you're a podcast guru. I have a couple of questions. Great. So, but okay, you're new to the platform. So my first question is, what do you think of it so far? Um. When I went to start the whole talk now thing, the directions are in gray text on a black background. So I completely missed that I was supposed to add a title to this. So it took me a second to figure that out. Other than that, <laughs> okay. it's okay. 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 That's, I mean, that's your, you don't have any more in depth. Um, we got 20, we got 20 people listening. Um, that's more than we get on Twitter spaces. So that's cool. I haven't really played with it a much. Um, this is the first, okay. I mean, literally you're, you're looking at the first, uh, 20 minutes of me using it. And I've, I've gone through when I started up, I get to hear somebody say, hi, I'm so-and-so I am a, you know, whatever guru, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. So that's kind of cool. I right. have, I haven't seen somebody and I had somebody ask a question that had nothing to do with podcasting to me. Um, so I was like, they were like, who knows you the best? And I'm like, okay. Uh, my I think bro- that's spam. I think it's some spam. I I got I get those too. I think it, I think some people kind of spam questions. Yeah. So I was like, um, my brother. I've known him my whole life. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but uh, the so, audio quality on the platform is good. I mean, you you sound good to us coming in. So uh, it whatever right. they're doing, it, it does. Are, what 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 equipment are you on? I'm just on my iPhone yeah. right now. That sounds great. Yeah, sounds really good. So. Um, well, just to introduce myself, I'm John Busy. You said John Biz is John Busy. So it's just a, it's just a spin on the word busy. Ah. That's why I just spell it like that. So um, I'm a I'm, bun- I'm what you call an abundant life hacker, and that basically is that I hack through life. I I find different ways through the law of attraction to manifest what I want, and I've been having great success in the last several years and months and it keeps just keeps expanding and picking up. So that's why I call myself an abundant life hacker because I'm here to teach people how to be more abundant and also to continue to learn more about it. So that's my, I don't even see, I don't even have a canned spiel. That's just, <laughs> that's just what it is with me. Um, but I, I just started uh, the, the, with wisdom. I've been on here a couple of weeks and I think it's great because it kind of revamped me kind of getting uh, what I want to say out there. And of course, if you get some listeners and you get some people talking back to you, you it helps your validation and your confidence. So sure. that is one thing that I think that's, that's why I was asking you, what do you think of this? Cause you're like a, you know, that you're a seasoned podcaster. So like, that's why I was thinking, well, what does the seasoned podcaster think about this? And you gave me your opinion. But my question for you, what I did last night, I immediately, well, I mean, for the first time I did like a multi-stream, you know, you've heard of, have you ever heard of restream? Yeah. It's yeah. Like that, that uh, okay so i got that and then i streamed on my on my linkedin youtube facebook um i think that that was it the three and and then my facebook profile my facebook page my facebook profile i did a, like a live stream last night for the first time it went on for three hours so what i did i had i had the the wisdom thing going at the same time mm-hmm. and what i whenever someone would would talk on wisdom i'd have to just hold the the phone up to the microphone so that people could hear any other platform. And, but I'm listening to you and I'm thinking you, you've got, and I just went on your YouTube and I see you're actually talking to somebody with a, with a separate, uh, with a separate software, I guess. Right. 
and then you're also streaming here. So how are you doing it? Because I'm like, do you have any advice on how to how to make it work better? I think it sounded okay the way I did it when I, when I was holding the phone to the microphone, but it sounded okay. But they haven't integrated this yet into Restream or anything, so that's why I have to do it like that. But any, any advice on on that? Yeah, I believe if you go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash how, uh, I'm using a tool called uh, the, it's from a company called Rode. It's called the Rodecaster. In this case, it's the Rodecaster 2. And I've connected my phone okay. via a, uh, in this case, via Bluetooth. And then I am tied into a web tool called StreamYard. And StreamYard has me now going to Facebook, my Facebook page. It goes to YouTube. It goes to Twitch. And I think that's it. There might be other places. And so uh, the other person you're hearing is Jim Coulson from TheAverageGuy.tv. And we joined via StreamYard, and then we tie the phone, which in this case is Wisdom. It used to be we would do uh, Twitter spaces. But we have definitely right. more people listening right now on Wisdom than we ever did on Twitter spaces. And so uh, that's how it's doing. And then this is all being recorded on separate tracks. And later I will put this out as a podcast. Okay, so so you're saying you, you, you well, I'm trying to think of the connect. How you, I'm I'm pretty techy, by the way, too. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of understand what you're saying. You're saying you you hooked up the phone. So you're you're not talking directly into the phone. You're hooked up via Bluetooth through your computer and then into yeah my the phone or my, like, my yeah my uh, microphone is tied directly into the Rodecaster. Everything goes in and out of the Rodecaster. So uh, my microphone okay. is plugged into the Rodecaster. Jim's signal through Streamyard is plugged into the Rodecaster. And you're plugged into the Rodecaster via my phone, tied in via uh, Bluetooth. And I think I'm I'm trying to gotcha. So yeah, if you go to askthepodcastcoach.com/slash/how, it's an older video. It's using the Rodecaster one, but it's the same thing. You could also do this with a okay. a piece of hardware called the. Uh, it's from a company called Zoom, and it's called the PodTrack P4. And right now that is on sale. Normally that's two hundred and twenty dollars for that piece of equipment, and it's on sale for one hundred and fifty bucks. So it's that's another really powerful piece of hardware that makes it easy to connect a bunch of things together. Wow, because you, I mean, because you sound really good on this. And then and now you're also saying that me talking, my volume and everything is is loud and clear on the other platforms that yeah. you're that you're live streaming on as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I actually, I have a, nice. I have nice. a, I have you on a volume knob. So I, if you're not loud enough, I can turn you up. And if you're too loud, I can turn you down. You know, think of what I'm think saying. I'm, I'm, not, like, I'm not being, I'm not ahead. being held up to a microphone. You're saying I'm, I'm coming internally through the system. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Think, think nice. about you're, nice. you're like, nice. think nice. We, we'd have you on a microphone, like, except the microphone is the phone and it's plugged into the mixer. And then those that mixer gotcha. is bringing all those feeds together. So if you can kind of just mentally nice. picture it like like that, then you just kind of you know we're plugging you into the mixer to be able to get that to get that mix, and it's clean, so it's okay. it's completely digital, and so you you get that a really is so clean awesome. signal. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But but by the by the way, Dave, um, I'm a law of attraction manifestation expert, and I've just manifested you. You've manifested me, basically. Oh. And uh, as said on my live broadcast last night, I needed a way to do what you're doing right now. There you go. <laughs> now you know. And here now you know. are. First thing in the morning for me, I'm about to go work out. But here you are. and You just gave me gave me the answer well, to solve my problem. Well, good, John. Unbelievable. You, John, you got to answer a question for me because I see where by default, I think you have 10 minutes here and it says you have two minutes and 12 seconds left. If for some reason yes. you weren't a nice person, which you are. But let's say you came in and just started right. screaming Bobby Baba Booey at me. How do how right. would I how would I kick you out of this? Do I just Okay, to kick Okay, to, to kick me out, you click on my face mm -hmm. and then actually actually no, under Okay, you either click on my face, I don't think I don't, I don't think that's the way. I think you actually under me, do you see where it says manage? Uh I'm trying to get back to I'm, me. I clicked on your name and now What's happening? Okay. I'm just, yeah, hit uh, the hit the X in the top top right corner okay in the top right corner you'll see an x Dogs okay when you cats. see when you see me talking yeah i see yeah, under me it says manage oh, i when see you that see manage there's right there's two different things the the one i forgot what the one on the left is but the one on the right is the one that kicks you that kicks a person out you can hit that and then say would you like to kick the person out and then it kicks him out. i think the one on the left is to block the person 
Got it. If I'm not mistaken, I learned that last night. Got it. And John, do you have a so that's website? That's how you do that. Do you have a website we could send people yeah, to? It's, yeah, it's J O N B I Z I. Z as in zebra, B I Z I, John Very and cool. And I'm, I'm going to, I know this was recorded, I can go back to it, but I'm going to have to ask you one more time because now, now I have my, my notepad out. Can you tell me those two um, hardwares again, please? Sure. The Zoom PodTrack P4 is uh mm, pod track mm -hmm. p-o-d-t-r-a-k because i guess c's were too expensive uh <laughs> okay. and, and then p4 and then the uh, and that's like i said right now on sale for 150 bucks and then the company is called road r-o-d-e and the tool i'm using is called the roadcaster pro 2 and that goes for about 800 bucks so that's that's a chunk of change for that one so but uh, roadcaster too yeah and and it's going to kick you out apparently in 10 seconds so when you go away that's not me that's wisdom doing that so well i can i can just i can tap and come back if you'd like but i did have a, i had a, a question about that first one i did have a question okay uh come back in we'll let him back in and then i i know jim's harvesting uh questions in the uh the chat room so it, just to show people what's going on here uh so john is is basically raised his hand and you can see where it says there's one guest waiting, and I'm going to click on his thing, and I can see there he is, John Busy, and I uh, click on the plus sign, and now it says guest is joining in three, two, one, and then uh, John will be back in. And there he is. And here I am. Gotcha. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. And I'm not going to take up. I'm not going to take up too much of your time because you're 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 probably doing a great show. I just kind of scrolled through here and I and I found you. And I was like, wow. And then I, I said, wow. But this is this is crazy. This this law of attraction thing. I, I've got a handle on it now. Great. <laughs> it's, uh, amazing. Um, that first one. Would I be able to the, the Zoom Pod Track P4? Would I be able to do the the same kind of connection that you're talking about doing, where you can hear wisdom through the through the hardware, and then we, we'll be able to hear on the main on all the platforms at the same time? Yeah, there's or a, is that something. Only with yep, it? you can you can plug your phone into this system uh, via. Uh, you can do a Bluetooth thing, but I when I use that one, I used it's uh, to get kind of geeky here. It's a TR. R, so there's two R's, T-R-R-S cable, and you can plug your smartphone right into it. Gotcha. No, even if it's an iPhone, T-R-R-S cable. Yep, yeah. and if, if, if you have an iPhone, you'll probably need to get a little connector to connect the lightning to what looks like a headphone jack, which is what I did when I was using that. So, mm -hmm. Yep. Gotcha. You, you nice, really man. I, I, I appreciate this so, so much because, man, I... Like I said, I have you have no idea how much you just helped me because this works. It's it's great. I'm like I said, I, I was holding the phone up to the microphone yesterday. It sounded crappy, but it was all all I could do. Oh, <laughs> right. sometimes that's what you do. You know, you got it. It's like, well, yeah, this, yeah. You, you do what you can with what you got. So uh, it's, it's more than most people do. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. You got it. Yeah, done, yeah. Right? yeah. You got it all done. right, John. Well, thank you. I, well, I. I I just started following you, Dave, and it's nice to meet you. And I, I hope to talk to you again. All right. Thanks, man. Take care. All right, so I'm going to, there we go, remove the guest, and I will say yes, remove him for now. Nothing personal, John. Um, well, there you go. we got 28 people here and 32 uh, people on. Uh, folks are listening on Wisdom, and they want to, Dave was showing some things on the video, and I know on Wisdom we're not broadcasting our video, but if you head to askthepodcastcoach.com slash live, you yeah. can join us for full video every Saturday morning too and get, Dave was showing the P4 and sometimes, visual representation of that uh, is handy. Yeah. So it's uh, fun filled and exciting learning new, new things. You know, this reminds me of the early days of this show where we're always like, I don't know, let's try this thing. No, it's fun. It's fun to, it'll be interesting to see where wisdom goes. You know, we've listen, we've watched a bunch of these right. start up and then die. <laughs> so, you well, know, when I saw on their website, they have a thing where the, the founder is talking about how she just wanted a way to spread, hence the name wisdom, to spread wisdom to people who can't afford it. And I was like, well, that's, mm -hmm. that's basically what Ask the Podcast Coach is. And so I was like, this sounds like it would be a good fit. And so, um, so far I would say it is. So the one thing I should ask John, which is not a big deal, uh, which is how do you raise your hand? Because I don't know what it's like from a listener standpoint, but I'm sure there's mm -hmm. a button there that's like, I want to talk to or something like that. Um, um, Kyle has a question going back to 
our discussion of RSS feeds, uh, and that is, um, is a 301 redirect only for the RSS feed URL, or does every podcast episode need a 301? Now, it's because what it is is the RSS feed has all the information about the podcast, uh, and that's what the app looks at. And so think of it like changing a, a radio station. We were, you know, uh, 91, uh, 97.5 The Fan, and now we're moving down to 107, you know, um, whatever. And you just redirect people to that, and all the information, all the songs, and, you know, Maddie in the Morning and, uh, you know, Binky in the Taint or whoever is on the that show. Uh, speaking of sports, we've got Jason Bryan on, on uh, uh, deck here. But it's just the feed. And then once that app, because what here's here's the uh, transition. I fire up, let's say, Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts goes to Kim's old feed on her website. And it says, hey, Kim doesn't live here anymore. She's over here on Blueberry. I get to Blueberry, and hopefully there's a, a spot in there where you can say new feed, yes. And when the app sees that, it goes, oh, this is this is a new home, and it updates Apple Podcasts. And then the next time I go to listen to Kim's show, when I fire it up, it goes right to, to the new feed. And that new feed has all the information, you know, what the description, the artwork, where the files are, all that other stuff. Uh, so you just need to redirect the feed. But 301 redirects are confusing. So, And Kyle Bondo is alive, by the way. We should say that. Kyle Bondo is alive. He uh, Was it he in had question? A, well, he had a thing. <laughs> um, here's, here's a fun little... Uh, uh, a thing, and Jason, we'll we'll get this uh, to you in just a second. Kyle went out in the middle of the desert in Utah, and something happened. This is where I'm a little blurry on the story, like sprained an ankle or something oh. to where he couldn't move. And when you're in the middle of the desert, yeah. you need agua. And he was getting very, very dehydrated. And I'm, that's all I know of the oh, glad he's the back. story. But it was you're it could have been very, very scary. So, um, oh wow. I thought that was, uh, that's supposed to be applause. Instead, Kyle, we're giving you loving crickets. So there you go. Um, that's very odd. Um, but let's get Jason in here. Uh, you know him, you love him from Matt Talk Online. Um, I still love him because I still have a clip of him going, Clamor on, Dave, somewhere on my uh, hard drive. Clamor, wow. I have to follow Binky in the taint with a, with a clamor throwback and basically just throwing Kyle under the bus for, eh, sorry, you can get enough water, cricket, cricket, cricket. Yeah. Great uh, way to start your day, Dave. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so uh, happy, happy belated birthday, by the way. Bla- no, it's now. So that, today's your birthday. Yeah, today is. Yeah, big. There we go. Yeah. See, happy thank birthday. you. There's no crickets there. He gets it right. Sorry, Kyle. Okay. Yeah. So my my forty. It's my forty third trip around the sun. Or... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ronky. Kyle, uh, uh, yeah, Jason. <laughs> Jason. Happy birthday to you. Oh, you my go. goodness. All yeah. right, there you go. I was hoping you'd break out into the Weird Al Yankovic version where, you know, it's right. time to celebrate your birthday. It happens once a year. We eat a lot of broccoli and drink a lot of beer. So Wow, broccoli that would, beer. Yeah, that would be a really bad evening for pretty much your significant other or anybody pretty much yeah. around you. Um, but Dave actually, Jim, sorry, Dave actually has advanced notice of this question because we were chatting earlier in the week. Uh, I'm like, you know what? I need to bring this up on the show because it's not necessarily a Jim and Dave situation. I think this is a broader question for the entire group because, uh, I get a lot of questions like, like you guys do, uh, from podcasters and people in my space, my world of wrestling. And it's like, Hey, have you ever thought about this? You do this. And usually I've, I've done enough of this for the last, you know, since 2008 to kind of know some of the answers on how my people can do it. But I got hit with a question. A friend of mine, she's a, she's an Olympic Olympic level athlete at the Olympic training center in Colorado Springs and goes, Hey, I want to do a podcast from the sauna. Oh, but whoa, wait, 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 what? Yeah. And the thing is the key is, is the video component is the big part of it. The, the optics and says, yeah, I had these great interviews with, with, you know, once we're done with practice, we're finishing up in the sauna doing, you know, saunas also have a kind of a, a negative connotation with them in wrestling. This isn't for about extreme weight cutting. Um, this is, this is, you know, it's, it's a, you know, therapeutic way after to, you know, warm the muscles up and blah, blah, blah. But she wants to figure out how to do it. She's like, I've done a couple things with my phone, but it lasts about five minutes because most saunas usually get over 140 or more degrees. So <laughs> usually your phone gets that little shut off thing. So I'm sitting there racking my brain and I did find a guy named sauna times who does this show 
from a sauna. It's about sauna culture. It's not about I am sitting in a sauna doing interviews while he does that, but he just does the audio. So I'm still out on how to do the video. And there's some of the key key points to this is one, keeping it cool or not overheating. And the audio is probably going to be sketch. And there were, when another key is, is like a lot of people that, that call on the show, on a budget. So the <laughs> option to go out and get like the $900 GoPro with the audio, you know, the, the creator version. I've looked these things up. I'm like, that's really not a thing. So I was just kicking around ideas. Does anybody in the chat or do you guys have any con- concepts or ideas? Because my first thought was, okay, take your phone and get maybe one of these like little road guys, the little shotgun mics, and see if you can get that that phone connector into it, and then have that on top of your camera. Put your camera in like a padded lunchbox, for lack of a better term, with like some ice packs around it to at least, and then kind of close the gap so you're 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 kind of almost you know clamshelling it, and just put a thought there. And no, we're not gonna no, we're overthinking it. XLR cable. This is not a, this is in a used sauna at the Olympic and Paralympic Training Center. So cabling's out. They're Mm. not, this is not 4K. This is not, this is like, we need something small to record the video. And another key is they're going to be editing on an iPad. That's another Lord of Questions. (laughs) Anyway, so I'm just looking at the basic thing. Let's get the video recorded and at least some semblance of possible audio. Then, uh, that's that's where I'm at. So I figured I would save that question for this show um, mm. because keeping the door open is not an option. Other athletes are going to be using this. I wireless had, mics? Wireless. Again, we're looking at a budget here. I thought the wireless yeah. go-to may be an option, yeah. but then we're if we're syncing it, if it was me doing a full production podcast, I could figure this out. But we're looking at you know somebody that's got time. They want to do it. They want to record their their conversations with – you know, with their fellow athletes. And I love the concept. And I've, you know, I've been in the sauna with athletes when they have these, these deep discussions, like this would be a good show. Mm. They want to do it. So I'm throwing it out there. A um, couple things. Again, we're not looking, we're not going to run cables. That's just, you know, we do, we, maybe it's small. We're not running XLRs. We're not doing heavy audio equipment here. Although if there's, if it's something where you're lining it, I still think, you know, like the shotgun to the phone and keep the phone cool enough to use because yeah. those they got the great cameras on them, so you're not going to bring in a a a high dollar you know digital mirrorless SLR or something <laughs> in, into a 180 degree sauna. It's just just you know mm. the batteries overheat with on a regular temperature controlled room. So who knows what they would do in a sauna? So just throwing that out there. I'm I'm thinking Jim is on Google right now looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's just audio or video you're you, you have to have video they, as well? she wants the video component because okay, that's so part of the optics you want to go to the moon and you've got seven dollars that, yeah that's that's what this okay all right so i just right. want to make sure i want to make yeah. a peanut butter and jelly sandwich but we and can't I afford any bread and i have jelly and i have a box of peanuts yeah but i have no utensils i have no blender i have yeah. no knife you, you don't even have jelly you just have grapes that Maybe you're a little well, and they're green. They're not. They're white grapes. They're not even the Concord grapes. <laughs> um, yeah, diving gonna, cage with the, a bunch you're of run. A, you're gonna have a hard time with the high moisture yeah. and heat content. Yeah. Well, it's you, thing is, it's not moisture. This is not. It's not a steam room. So we're looking at it, uh, you know, a lot of lot, a lot of people think saunas that you know they're oh it's that sticky. Wet. No, no movies and steam. No, it's hot. Yeah. Very, there's actually not a whole lot of moisture in a sauna except from the sweat, and that's where lav mics are out because you are that will just toast a lav mic just right. on the sweat alone. Yeah. I, yeah. I think Dan is has put this into a, a really well thought out what we're all kind of thinking. <laughs> I feel like sometimes people want a big budget project without the big budget, and it's just not possible without spending Ooh, the money. Dash cam. That I see that in the chat. Mm. That hmm. Hmm. I I just use a GoPro. Yeah, if we could find just a GoPro, find, yeah. I would find a used GoPro somewhere that that they're just made, or even a knockoff, like yeah. you know, a GoPro knockoff. But you can, I think now you can get some pretty decent GoPros. You know, the a couple versions back for. Yeah, I still know, think one keeping whatever well. unit it is cool is is also uh, or, or not cool. You can't keep it cool in a 180 degree sauna. You're no. <laughs> keeping it not melting is kind of yeah. the key because I, yeah. I was I remember being in one in, in Uzbekistan and my hotel room key was actually kind of sitting on the edge of the the plank or the bench and it actually 
It was so <laughs> hot, it melted into it curved. I'm like, this is a hot sauna. So yeah, yeah, that's I just. Well, mm. I just I just felt like it, I'd never gotten this question before, and I'm like, you know what? This yeah. is I haven't oh. been on the show in a while. This is the time for me to jump in. So and it's yeah, also yeah. you know you know it's I get I get a treat for my birthday. I get to come on the show. What's the max temperature in these? In these um, things? I want to say the one of the training centers is probably 180, 190. Nah, yeah, you're not. GoPro is gonna gonna stop Uncle, working too. Yeah, Uncle but here's the, here's the one thing. Here's the one thing. Uh, that's a good to know. Keep an idea. You know, that, that might be something to look at. But because uh, yeah. what I'll probably do is end up trying these things out before I tell her one way or the other, just because right. gear acquisition syndrome is, <laughs> you know, do you and have you might gear need acquisition a dash cam, syndrome? Yeah. I, you know what? I've kind of want one just because, you know, right. You know, I mean, I've driven to Fargo with a GoPro and had to s- swap out, like recharge the thing for a while. You know, uh, I've watched yeah. YouTubers lose their GoPro just in the sun. You know, so it's it's a ninety degree day. It's sitting out in the sun. It's yeah. done. So yeah, I'm just curious. On I think is I probably do need to go back and be like, how much are you looking to spend here? Because yeah, yeah you, you know, you know, gear is going to be a couple hundred bucks regardless, depending on whether or not. You, I always say you start with a cheap option, then you start buying stuff, right? And be like, okay, this doesn't work. We need to we need to keep moving on. That's why I have some five dollar things and I have some fifty dollar things. What usually works? The fifty dollar thing, right? Wow, cool picks. I bought one of those in 2003. Five megapixels, but yeah, that thing. Ice bucket. Then, well, there's well, one, yeah. An ice boxes. bucket full of water, and the GoPro is diving in a diving box, and it looks out of the bucket. I was thinking about that, like some sort no, of box the audio, of ice. though. You're not going to get think, the audio in that. Well, scenario. here's the other thing to think about. In a hundred and whatever degree temperature, whatever ice bucket you have is going to be a bucket of water real quick. Yeah, it's true. But here's the thing. Sauna sessions typically don't go any longer than about 10 to 12 minutes because... Uh, what that what they typically is okay. We do ten minutes max, then we go into do, do a cold plunge, then back in. Can you imagine? What elite athletes are crazy. Okay, I'm gonna sit in 180 degree temperature for ten minutes, then I'm gonna jump into a bucket of ice water, and then go back into the sauna and then do it again. I don't. Ugh, I, no. Yeah. No. I did that uh, one time with these guys. We were again in that aforementioned yeah. uh, sauna. I'm like, okay, we'll jump the. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm, I'm. I'll go back into the sauna. I'm not getting back in that cold tub. Yeah, that's... most of these dash cams are rated to about 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm. So you're close. The, right. the, close. the other tricky part is going to be, I guess, because it's dry heat. You're not going to have maybe as much problem with it fogging up the lens. So Yeah, well, it's also going to be one of those things where you, you keep will the receipt and be out. like, well, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you uh, come out of there, I mean, it's hot. And as yeah. soon as you come out and hit any kind of cool moisture, that screen's going to fog up for That's sure. That's true. Yeah. yeah. All right. Just, yeah. just figured I'd throw right, that Jason, out there good, to the group. Good question. You got my, my hardware nerd. Uh, same here. I've been looking at it all week. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what? I need to save this for the show because I don't think we've ever had a question like nope, this. And I've been never. listening for, no. geez, probably since I started podcasting. So yikes. But anyway, thanks for the uh the the chat messages. They're good. I'm keeping an eye on them too. So uh appreciate the input and uh as Jason, always great having you. Listening back at home for the first time in I don't know how long. Good, so. good to have you. Go. Home. Good to have you. Cool. Home. All right, man. Par- Take care. Par- party on, Jason. Peace out. Party on, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. and then he he threw that and we're all like uh nope that would what if we didn't know that was uh, yeah, that's yeah. a that's a that's an interesting Dude, well it, it, listen it's not as hard if you have a little bit of money right yeah it's not true. as hard it's yeah it's just that's, hard if you want to try and do it on a budget you know? the whole there is I forget the name of it there's a program that you can get on an iPad oh I forget the name of it I've seen a, a couple people use it and. But there's just a part of me that goes, yeah, okay. I just because you can do a podcast on an <laughs> iPad, like, yeah, yeah, should yeah. you? It just makes it harder. I have a, a guy right now at the School of Podcasting. Speaking of that, if you're a member of the School of Podcasting, hold that thought. He said to himself, if you're a member of the School of Podcasting, we are moving to a new platform and check the Facebook group. Please read the email that says, very important. Please read. You want to read that. We are moving. And if you do not move in the next couple of days, you'll be locked out of, you won't be able to log in because you didn't migrate. So uh, keep that on that uh, news. But uh, he's trying to do, he's moving. So he put all of his podcast stuff into a storage unit and he's trying to do it on an iPad. And we're like, oof, 
Now, you can get the ATR2100X, which plugs in via USB-C to the iPad. So the recording part is is not that hard if you're doing a solo show. But uh, it, my whole thing is then getting it out and exporting it and that whole nine yards. And the iPod I have, the not the iPod, the iPad I have, I think is the iPad 2. And that's back when iPads were kind of like this cute little thing. Now an iPad is basically a computer. It's like a thousand bucks. I'm like, I'm not replacing that thing. So um, uh, Fred is asking here about uh, Steve Stewart's Podcast Academy. Um, it's, uh, yeah, they are basically revamping it. They were on my show a couple weekends ago, uh, a couple weeks ago, and they are just kind of tidying up a bit. My guess will be shortly after podcast movement, they will uh, turn it back on. But uh, they're they're revamping some stuff, and I believe also the price might be going up. So, uh, for right, yes, is the one that um, and um, oh, I forget that there was a podcast editor. He was at my roast. I can see his face. I can't remember his name, and he was like the king of for right. And I asked him. I go. He had a course on how to use for right on an iPad to do a podcast, and he said that's ah, hard to keep up with the software. And he he shut it down. I was like, oh, so. Um, the AT2020 just launched a new, I see it again, but that's a condenser mic. Not a huge fan. So, uh, well, Jason, one more thing to look at, uh, it was, would, would be an outdoor security cam, mm. uh, that has a built-in microphone in it. Uh, the audio won't be great, but a lot of times those things are built for those extremes. That's true. And so that just, that might be another option to mount that. It, it'd be easy like once it's mounted in there and you've got a connection to it, they're most of the time they're Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, you know, you might need to, you, I, you would not want to put that battery, like that battery in that heat is going to, you're going to, yeah. it's just going to go like that. I, uh, but I'd wire it if I could. I bought probably over a year ago, some wise equipment, mm-hmm. some outdoor cameras and call me weird. I don't like drilling holes in if I don't have to. And so I didn't want to drill a hole into the outside of my house. So I bought some, uh, this is so, well, it's kind of somewhat podcasting related. I bought some gorilla mounting tape that was supposed to hold up to 30 pounds and uh, cleaned the surface and put a bunch of tape on in. Yeah, I went out later and there was my camera sitting on the front porch. And I was like, okay, <laughs> looks like I'm going to be drilling some holes into to that. But yeah. uh, I would think the other thing, at least now, I know there's already a version two of the wise outdoor camera, the audio on that, I would not put out as a podcast. It was, it was not great. But now on the other hand, if you're in a sauna, you're closer, you're not, it might be better, but uh, yeah, this, here's the dynamic though on this. Like, so you have these conversations that go on in the sauna and they're awesome, but they go on cause they're anonymous. Like they're not mm. being recorded. It's it. And Jason, not, not trying to discourage you or, or the group trying to do this, but as soon as you, you know, the deal, as soon as you turn that thing on, right. um, those conversations stop. It's <laughs> a good you know? point. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it, 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 I'm not, listen, I'm not, again, not discouraging, but sometimes that just takes away knowing it's knowing it's recording just changes the dynamic. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, what's not, uh, you talk about things being kind of disappointing and it doesn't work right and things like that. What always works right is, uh, the link ask the podcast coach.com slash support. Uh, that's where our awesome supporters are. And you can be one of those awesome supporters. Uh, and, oh, I forgot about this. We will turn on our, our good woman from the tube here and, uh, we'll, we'll promote one of our random awesome supporters. So... Open awesome supporters. From askthepodcastcoach.com slash support, looks like it's Felix at latinpodcastawards.com. There you go. Thank you, Felix, for being an awesome supporter at latinpodcastawards.com. Uh, if you want to try PodPage, check it out over at trypodpage.com. Uh, Ask the Podcast Coach, if you go out there, is hosted on PodPage. So if you're tired of Wix and you're tired of uh, Squarespace and you're tired of updating 87 plugins on WordPress, tripod page at tripodpage.com. If you just can't get enough Jim Collison, well then go over and check out home gadget geeks at the average guy dot TV. And when you think podcasting, well, think school of podcasting because it's new and improved. We've got a new backend 
It now features unlimited time-shifted one-on-one consulting. Uh, use the coupon code COACH, I believe, when you go to school at podcasting.com. And of course, if you'd like to be an awesome supporter, go over to askthepodcastcoach.com slash support. There are multiple ways that you can support the show. So thanks to everybody who can, is doing that. Can you support me with a little Some bit more, of Some uh, little, more, a little more coffee. Um, I need to find, there it is. You're making me thirsty. That's um, a good cup of coffee this morning, too. <laughs> you need it. I You've too. been up since two. Starting to fade a little bit. Well, I, I think we'll make it till the end, but I'm going to need a nap this afternoon. That's for sure. Uh, Coach Dave brings up something here. If you are an Otter user, otter.ai for transcriptions, they are changing their price in not a great way. They are, because right now you have unlimited uploads, and I have something ridiculous like 6,000. I'm on the $9 plan. It's like 6,000 hours of transcriptions. Well, they're changing it, I think, in September, so next month, to where you only have, I want to say like 12, no, 10 uploads, 1,200 hours. And I was like, uh, guys, how am I supposed to get 1,200 hours if you only let me upload 10 items? And they're kind of like, you can lock in your price. So I did. I, I bought a year and locked in my price, and I'll jump off that bridge when I get to it. But Coach Dave is saying, I'm using Nuta from AppSumo. Uh, transcriptions are good. Subtitles, if I wanted them, I can record an audio via the Roadcaster Pro and run it through Nuta for notes, and it goes right into my CRM. Interesting. I'll have to uh, to check that. I've never heard of Nuta, but uh, there you go. Uh, Tom Taylor says, "I am the i I am the iPad guy." <laughs> I think my temporary solution is to record on the PodTrack P4, then import it into GarageBand. It's not perfect, but it'll do for now. Now, how do you get the file off your iPad? into wherever I'm going to guess FTP maybe into your media host or whatever. Cause that's the whole thing with an iPad is getting it on and off. Cause you can't, it's not like you can plug a USB stick into it or something like that. So that will be uh that's always the tricky part of me that I go, can't you just do this on your computer? But you never know. Um, we, we had a question from earlier from, yeah. uh, Dad state uh dad space podcast, which actually sounds something like something I'd listen to. He said, any suggestions on what you can do with, with our list of previous guests? And I actually have kept a list of every single guest that I've had since 100. Why 100? Well, that's just when I started keeping track of the guests that went there. I said, they have guests, guests are wanting to stay in touch after their episode. We started a Facebook group for now. Other suggestions on that. Dave, any suggestions of, Keeping those keeping those um, relationships going. Oh, do I? Uh, the tool I use. I'm giving away all my secrets today. Um, and this is like like this is free consulting that you can get on a Saturday without. Well, like there's that, that, those kinds of secrets. The in you just two come week, out and listen. Yeah. <laughs> in <laughs> in, uh, in two weeks, uh, I will have Toby. Um, Goodman from, he's the, the guy behind Blueberry Pro or something like that. And I use a tool and I'm trying to find my affiliate link because they have one and you know, why leave money on the table? But this is the real name of the software because every time I looked into a CRM, right? A customer relationship manager kind of tool, it was always like about funnels and stuff like that. And I was like, no, I just need something to remind me to talk to this person in six weeks. And yeah, there are things like Todoist and things like that. And the name of the software is Less Annoying CRM. If you go to supportthisshow.com slash less annoying. And one of the things I love about it is if I'm in Less Annoying CRM and I've got their email, when I click on it, it sends the email. I have it connected to my Gmail. And what I love about it is it assigns you this kind of wacky email that is blind carbon copied. So I can go in and see every time I've emailed this person. And if they email me, I can forward it to this email. It works a little bit like Evernote. Evernote has an email that you can send to that'll put it in Evernote. Kind of the same thing. And man, I love it. It's the only thing I hate about it. It does not work with Zapier. So when somebody mm -hmm. signs up and you were mentioning Zapier earlier, yeah. moving to this new platform, I have so much stuff now that goes on with Zapier. I love Zapier. And that's the one thing I wish uh, this did. So I have it send a, um, what what Zapier does is it sends, it updates a Google sheet. Well, all the information about the person that just signed up at the School of Podcasting, which I then import into a less annoying CRM and it 
adds them as a contact. So it's not quite automatic, but I get all the information in there. So that's, that's my favorite tool there. I've tried other ones, but they always want to make a funnel and they, I'm like, no, I just want something so I can go back in and see, Oh, the last time I talked to, you know, Nancy, uh, she had bought the microphone and she was waiting for her son to come over and hook it up. So I should probably email her and say, Hey, did your son ever come over and hook up your microphone kind of thing? I love that software. So that's one of my, uh, favorite tools. So um, I've, I've had great success just having the guests back on. <laughs> like if you find a really good guest, there's no rule in podcasting and, in dad space podcast. I, I don't know your, your situation. So I'm not trying to give you advice on something I don't know, but um, yeah, like there's no rule. I think sometimes we think there's a rule in podcasting. Oop, I can only have a guest on once and then they're spent and you're like, well, if they're really good and they've got more to say, have them back on. Like, why wouldn't you? I have Erin Lawrence, who was just on the on the podcast um, on Thursday night. She comes on now about once a quarter. She loves coming on. We love having her on. Um, it, it's you know, it's one of those kinds. She she's a gadget blogger and and YouTuber, and so she fits perfectly. And we talk about her articles, and she has more content than we can actually get out. So it's one of those kinds of situations. Every quarter. She has six new things to talk about. So why wouldn't I have her back on? So I think in some cases, if you're, if you're feeling like you can only do, you know, oh, I got this guest and I can't come back to him, man, if they're really good, bring them back quickly. And, uh, you know, I've had, I've had Uncle Marv. He's really great, by the way, as a, as he's, he's a gadget guy too, fits in. Uncle Marv's been on my podcast a couple times over the last year and um, I'm, we'll continue to have him back on. He's just a great guest. So that's, that's my way of staying up to date with the guests is just keep having them back. And, you know, I do some Facebook messaging with some, I do some texting with others. We do some email on a few, you know, every, everybody's a little different. So you just kind of figure that out. But Dave, just for me, a spreadsheet of every show and who the guest was, is just a handy tool to go back and say, Hey, when was the last time, when did I, when was the last time I had Dave Jackson? And you've been on my show a couple of times too. When was the last time I had Dave Jackson? Well, it was December 2020, I think it's the last time we had I had you on there. And so it's just a good way to track it. And you can do that if you're like, oh, I wish I would have done that. Somewhere on my YouTube channel, if you go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash 404, I'll put a link in the description later. I have a YouTube video where you can have Excel and you import your RSS feed into Excel and it'll put not only the name of the show, it'll give you a ton of stuff that you don't need but you can go through and delete that. Uh, and then you can add columns like who was the guest and, and things like that. It's actually, uh, I was surprised that uh, being an old Excel nerd, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Cause there are times when you're like, cause the other thing it does is it gives you a link to that episode. So you can go right to your website or whatever you have that on. Uh, that's a, that's a handy little tool mm -hmm. that way. Gabrielle has a great question too. She says, how do you have, you have any suggestions on how to refurbish old episodes of your podcast? Mm. And nobody does this better than radio lab. Mm. So it, in listen for some, I, I I'm sure they have listeners that get annoyed when they do this, but they are pulling past episodes from four years ago or eight years ago. Then something's going on, you know, they're kind of a current, a current event podcast. They're always talking about things that are going on in politics or around the world interesting things that, that are happening around the world. Something might happen and they're like, oh, this podcast we did four years ago is, is appropriate today. They have no, they do not apologize about bringing good content back up to the top. And then they just jump on and they'll say, hey, you know, hi, we're the hosts. Uh, this is going on in the world right now. We thought this, this was appropriate. We're going to play it for you now. Guess what? The listener has the option to do. Play it or skip it. Yeah. Isn't that an amazing thing, Dave, that yeah. listeners actually have a choice on that to be able to, if they don't want to listen to it, they don't. I find myself listening to them again. And I think it's a great way to repurpose. I, I would not apologize for repurposing your content that way. Well, you're doing something that makes, cause I'm I, part of me goes, why should I repurpose? It's right there in the feed. Go listen to it. But cause Mark Marin does this every time somebody dies. He'd be like, hey, we lost another good one. You know, the fat comedian died and blah, blah, blah. And he'll play his interview. So exactly what you did. Hey, this is happening in the world right now. We right. talked about this like a year and a half ago. And yeah. that's why we're bringing it back. To me, that sounds thought out. And here's why, yeah. as opposed yeah. to, hey, um, I don't know what to talk about today. So here's episode 27 from 2017. You're like, mm. Yeah. 
Damn. I'd I'd record a new intro and a new outro so that you know you, you and then play it in entirety or edit it down if you need to. You you can right. do that as well. Take parts out that aren't appropriate or or aren't applicable anymore. But yeah, Gabrielle, I, I wouldn't hesitate to to do that. I don't think that's a bad thing if it's appropriate for what we're doing. And then just change it up a little bit. Um the we were talking about this at Gallup internally, how I, I thought I wanted to do some of this if we get in a spot where we need to repurpose some things. And the the my marketing a partner at first was really resistant and she was like well we can't name it the same thing because you know that'll that'll cause seo confusion yeah okay there's some things to think about and as you think about the titling of it you may want to you might want to change the title on it you might want to update the title you might want to yeah. put updated in the you know like or use the same title and put updated so there's a few things to think about if you're going to repurpose there's a few things from an seo perspective to to think about in there and how do you want to handle that it by by adding new audio to it of course as google which you, we know they're listening now on our podcasts it will create a different signature file this is the nice thing about adding some content to it the the as they you know they do some kind of code to know what that audio is it'll now be a different file and so it, it will for them it'll show up as different so i think gabrielle there's there's i think there's some stuff for you i wouldn't hesitate uh, Richard is asking, what was that Excel tool thing called? It was called Excel. Uh, I put a link in the uh, chat uh, to my YouTube channel on that to uh, to do that. I had another question I saw up here from, yeah, Jack and Around Show. Um, this is one that says, uh, I'm launching a new podcast on November 1st and releasing it on the 1st, 3rd, and 5th uh, Tuesdays. So basically, 1st, 3rd, and 5th Tuesdays. Okay, so is that the first, third, and fifth of the month, or the first, third, no, every and every first, first third, third, and fifth and fi Tuesday? Okay, so for, and if some some months won't have a fifth, so to just well, be first and third, right? Uh, we'll have eight in the can. Should I release two or three on the day of the premiere? And to this, I say. And now it's time for a power rant. Now be kind. Be kind. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It really. It doesn't. No. Doesn't. I, I just did an episode of uh, the podcast consultant and I'm being fun here, Jack, or Jack. And so, um, but, and people are saying like, how do I come back when I've been gone for a month? Like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, well, how did you start? You figured out who your audience is. You figured out what they want. You figured out why you're doing the podcast and what, how to entertain them. And then you talk behind the mic. You probably edited it a little bit cause you're a little rusty and then you published it. And I'm like, don't overthink it. Just, just hit record the same way when you started it. So um, a lot of people really, they talk about the big launch. I'm going to do the big launch. And you want to have a big launch. Don't get me wrong. You want to tell everybody you know, and the more you can get them to subscribe on the same day or at least in the same week. Uh, Tanner Campbell just got into the top 100 of iTunes or Apple Podcasts, take your pick, uh, with 24 subscribers. That was it which kind of also makes you do this. When you see people, wow, look at me, I'm in the top 100 of Apple. You're like, yeah, you have 24 uh, subscribers. It's not as cool because it's not, I, I talk about this in my talk at Podcast Movement. That is not a, it's not a chart. It's a trending list. Who is hot right now? And you're like, yeah, but Joe Rogan is, is on the top. All, yeah, he's trending every single day. That's pretty much what's going on with Joe. Um, so, you know, I, so to answer your question, I'd go with two. Why? Because it never hurts to have extra in the can. Because as somebody who's recording two episodes of the School of Podcasting this weekend, I'm kind of like, I wish you would have had a couple in the can because my I, my uh, weekend's a little booked this way. So, but I would say, Dave, on this question, what helps you sleep at night? You know, yeah. so if you're doing a big launch, and this may be different. I think sometimes we think of a podcast launch, a new podcaster, and they don't have a huge following. Sometimes. If you got a big newsletter following or you've got a big influence following on YouTube or whatever, and you're launching a new podcast and it's going to be a new channel, and it's going to be you, you might want three to five on there when folks land. Like you, you want to make, you might want right. to make it look like it's been around a while. Like there's nothing more disappointing than a new podcast and there's one there, you know, and you're like, oh, uh, they just, they I just disagree. Started. They just started. So not, not everybody <laughs> feels that way, Dave. <laughs> I'll they tell you hit why it when you're done. Yeah, they hit it. The kids hit it and kind of go, oh, there's just one. Or 
they really like what's there on the one and they want to listen to a second one and it's not there. Now, again, there's exceptions to every rule and some of those kinds of things. But I would say do what helps you sleep at night. If you need to put five there, put five. If you yeah. need to do 10, do 10. If you've got one good one, put one good one there. But but Ooh. what you do, just do do what you do that helps you go, I've done enough. Yeah, uh, Jack, and what's the name of this? It's a big launch. We've hosted bigger names in country music. Yeah. It's regarding mental health, so that's cool. Um, yeah. My whole thing about one, now I get it. I, I yeah. On one hand, I totally agree. When there's only one, somebody may not hit play where you go, we'll be back next week with another episode. But I also agree with if you have one really good episode to where the people are like, holy cow, when's the next one coming out? I'm going to subscribe. But, uh, you know, so that's, uh, I think it was Paul Culligan right said on. that. He goes, if, if if there's just one and people want the second one now, he goes, that's, it's okay to have one episode. I'm like, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, no, uh, right on. Yeah, um, I agree. I agree. The, uh, but speaking of that, uh, Stevan says, should we start with a trailer first and sometime release the episodes? You can. What no. a lot of people are using trailers for is you need one episode in your feed to um, to have it be valid. The problem with trailers, in a way, and I just quit my podcast trailer show for part of this reason. They're awful. Most trailers are not good, and it makes sense because you're brand new to podcasting, so you're like, hey, do you want to show me Scott and David Scott? Sound effect, sound effect. <laughs> Join my show. Find it wherever fine podcasts are sold. They're awful. So if the trailer's really good... And makes people go, man, when is that coming out? Yeah. But I'm I I I like trailers. I think it's a cool way to get the word out about your show. What I want to do, one of the questions of the month that's coming up is, have you ever listened to a new show or given it a shot because you heard a trailer on another podcast? That's gonna be a question of the month. Cause I mean it's cool. It sounds great. I'm happy that they're kind of back, but man, the trailers are my I had one I seriously, I had eight trailers in a row and they didn't mention their website and i was like if i had a gun i would blow my brains out right now like i can't take it and they were just the one guy was just saying keywords it was like he had some sort of like music or something like that it was a fitness show and it was like you know all right you should listen to my podcast it's schwarzenegger you should listen to my podcast chopper protein workout girly man Listen to my podcast, wherever fine podcasts are sold. Thank you. And that was it. And I was like, what? What? It never even said the name of the show. And I was like, I can't take it. I just can't take it. So, Yeah, um, you, you need to spend, if you're going to do a trailer and you want to do it well, you spend some money from somebody who knows how to make them. Like, yeah. the, Because you can, in eight seconds, you can ruin somebody listening to your podcast with a bad trailer. Yeah. Uh, Coach Dave says, I recorded like eight episodes before my launch. That's something I would recommend. Mm -hmm. um, record a couple, and Jim always says this, and then delete them. Throw them away. Yeah. Then I sat Just on my butt away. and They're obsessed terrible. over stats <laughs> for the next eight weeks. It was a shock to my system to have it go back on the mic after two months. Yeah, it's... um, I, I did that. I'm going to talk about this on the School of Podcasting, where I, I released 10 episodes at once on Buzzsprout just to see how many people would go back and listen to the other, because the first one's going to get downloaded automatically. How many people went back and listened to uh, the other nine? But the other thing, my little bumper sticker on this too, and again, you want to you want to use your email, you want to use your social media, you want to have business cards, hand out all your friends and family, let them know, hey, the podcast is available now. But also, if you think having a big launch is the key to podcast success, that's like saying having a big wedding is the key to a happy marriage. And in both cases, the work is just beginning. <laughs> Congratulations. It's, it's off and running, but you, you got to keep up on it. So, uh, it's, um, it's fun, but it, you know, the other thing that I keep forgetting to do and when I do it, it's fun when you have a, a new show and here's why, if you try one thing, a new strategy, it's easy to see if it works. So I'm doing this Akron podcast. I have my shirt on today, akronpodcast.com. And I copied one of the, like, not Better Business Bureau, but the whatever the agency is that helps new businesses in Akron. 
and there was this new thing going on that they had kind of spotlighted. Cham- so I, Chamber of Commerce. There we go. Okay. And I copied the Chamber of Commerce on Twitter, and they retweeted it, and it instantly bumped up my numbers. Now, again, not a ton, but more. And I was like, oh, so if you mention Road or Nestle or Wendy's or whatever it is you're talking about in your podcast, be sure to copy them on any kind of social stuff. Now, in many, many, many cases, they're just going to go, oh, thanks, whatever. But in some cases, they might retweet it and give you some more uh, subscribers. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I need to do that. And it's one of those things you kind of go, well, duh. But it's also on the list of other 15 things you need to do yeah. and yeah. you forget. And uh, so, you but, know, uh, well, let, let me in, in the final few minutes we've got here, let me let me bring this up, because I think this is important on the launch from a launch perspective as well. I think, in, and we've talked about this before, but I, I've, this week I just it, it became very, very clear to me how successful this was. We we always have this minimal CTA conversation too in the podcast. Don't overwhelm them with too many links or too right. much stuff. And I'm the king of a lot of CTAs at the end of the podcast. Like I for a long time I gave them like five or six that I'd say, hey, if you want to do this, join us here. If you want to do that, join us there. If you want to do this. And I had our marketing friends at Gallup said, stop doing that. Like, it's too much. And we talked about it here. And I was like, well, maybe, maybe it is. So I quit doing it. And my Facebook join numbers plummeted, like just literally fell off the, hmm. this because I stopped mentioning. I was like, well, you know, find us, search, search Clifton Strengths for wherever you're at and find us. Right. And, and I even gave a long URL, facebook.com slash group slash call the coach. I said it. We didn't have it anywhere. And I said it. Uh, this in the last, in the last week or two, I've probably gotten 20 requests to join the group and they all, I, cause we ask him, how did they hear about it? And they're mm. like, cause you said it in the podcast. Mm. And I was like, oh, you know, uh, and I've since put it back in, in this don't, don't fall for the minimal CTA advice. I think this is my own personal opinion. Don't fall for that thinking if you have important things to direct them to, be very, very clear about them. They will hear and listen to the CTAs they want to hear. If they've already done it, they're going to tune it out. Like they'll just, they'll just blow past it, whatever. But I've, I've never had a listener say, uh, yeah, your outro is too long. <laughs> right. Cause if they don't want to listen to it, they turn it off. And if they do need it, they'll listen to it. And so make sure you're including all of that information at the end. Do it in a way that's not boring. Right. You still can't be boring with it. Right. Practice it. Make sure you're good at it. But don't fall for the one, like, I'm going to have one link to, to win them all. <laughs> and if they just do this, no, that, I, that, that hasn't worked for us. When we actually did it, it actually didn't work for us. Um, the fun thing, uh, this is uh, part of my presentation of Podcast Movement, is you can see over here, this is my listeners. Uh, you can see here in the middle where my uh, mid-roll ad is. <laughs> Um, but also you can see where I start to end the show. So you are going to lose people mm. at the end, but you also see there are people that make it to yeah. the end. Um, what I like to do sometimes is a podcast sandwich. So I'll be like, Hey, ask the podcast coach.com. If you're listening to this now, we're off next week. But if you go to ask the podcast coach.com, there's a little microphone in the bottom right hand corner. Yeah. You can leave your question there. You can also be an awesome supporter. It's all there. Ask the podcast coach.com. So I had multiple calls to action in between that, I did want to show you one other thing. Speaking of a single link, is da, 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 where'd it go? Uh, Are we getting your entire? Yeah, that's uh, my podcast, entire. There it is. Podcast movie there, this presentation. One. Um, this is uh, from my podcast reviews. Uh, you talk about a single link. Instead of saying, "Hey, follow me on Apple and Google and Spotify and Amazon," if you just say, "Follow me at askthepodcastcoach.com/slash/follow." or subscribe or whatever you want to do. Um, and then this is, uh, we're yeah. looking on a yeah. screen right here, really pretty buttons, uh, courtesy of one Daniel J. Lewis. Um, and that's, uh, that's what I like to do when in, in terms of a single click and things like that. But yeah, uh, that's going to be, and if you're an awesome supporter, uh, once I get this presentation down, I did it last night and there were three times I was like, Ooh, I need to move this slide. Hold on. You know, where I'm running through it. That's the thing when they give you 45 minutes and I'm trying to do, 35. I want to leave 30 to 35, leave plenty of time for questions. But uh, if if it's a half hour and you do it twice, that's an hour. So if you're trying to practice this thing, you burn up a lot of time 
yeah. going over and over and over. Cause I like to, I don't want to memorize my presentation, but this is my thought. Once I get the basic content down, my brain doesn't have to think about what's on the next slide. And that's when my funny takes over. And like, okay, now I've got this dry, like, here are stats. This is what this is called. Now, how do I make this entertaining without bringing a cane and dancing and singing and a ukulele and, you know, confetti at the end, like a Kiss concert? That's what I need to do. Thank you. Good night. You should come out to one of those <laughs> full Kiss makeup. Like, how, how great would that be? Uh, that would be awesome. I would, I'd pay to see that one. I'd drive down to Podcast Movement to see that one. Yeah. Uh, do we have any other star? Oh, yeah. We have four minutes. Let's answer this question. Uh, here, this is something to think about. What do you think? Uh, here's an interesting thing. What is the future of podcasting? Coach Dave says. And I'll be. This is one of the things I want to throw out to people at uh, Podcast Movement because there are definitely two schools. Adam Curry is going to be there talking about value for value, and Libsyn just bought another advertising company, and those aren't. Uh, my question is, are those exclusive? Are they, you know, like, how's, how's, are we all going to go advertising? Or are we going to be, hmm, so, or is it just going to be like everything else? It depends on based on what you're doing. Well, so. Why can't, why can't it be both? Yeah, there's a novel like, idea. I, that, that's another one. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be one. In fact, an ecosystem of one is terrible. Like we don't actually want, we would never want, and this is going to sound crazy, but we never want one podcast player. We would never right. want one oh. podcast directory. We would never want one host provider. You want competition. Now I get it. It's confusing and there's different things and we fight, but that fighting is good. It creates, it creates new things and, and, and it creates, I'm forgetting the word it creates, but it creates yeah. stuff. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what uh, competition. There we go. Yeah. It creates competition, right? Which is good. So so I, I always rally against the monoculture. Like I, I think monoculture is terrible for these kinds of things. So why can't it be both? Why can't it both be ad insertion and value for value? Listen, I've railed on value for value, but it, it needs to be a part of the conversation right. so that it drives, it drives this. I'm glad you brought this up because when I had to go to these four different places to get stats, I was like, if everybody turns into their own walled garden and we have to submit to all these different sites to be an Amazon, I got to go to Amazon where now we have an RSS feed that just syndicates every place. I like, if we go to walled gardens, we are all going to lose our mind. Cause just going to four different sites to get stats. I was like, Oh, this is painful because there's no way to get them all in there, one place. There is that, dr there is that drawback, right? Yeah. There is that drawback to walled gardens, but they are, they, 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 they exist. We can't ignore them. If that's, if that's what the market gives to us, Dave, if we get to this point where yeah. the market says the walled garden is what work, guess what we need to do? We need to figure out ways. Then smart people would come along and say, hey, I'll create a stats engine that will draw from all four Close. of these sites and put them together into one, right? But the market's going to decide what it wants. And and we we listen, we definitely don't, we don't want Spotify to win this thing. <laughs> like they right. need competition in this space. We don't want Apple to win this thing. We, we want that competition. We want them fighting against each other um, for that. So uh, actually, we want to encourage this, this kind of duality or, or this multiplicity of, of, of podcast options and not just, I know it's frustrating, but we don't, we don't want a monoculture for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Last question here, uh, Richard asks, how do you drive listeners to actually using the microphone on pod page well if you think about it that's the first time i've ever mentioned it so e it's so easy and nobody will do it yeah so if you are listening to this not live and you go oh i always want to ask a question and i can never get up at 10 30 or whatever you can ask a question anytime you want hence the benefit all you have to do go to askthepodcastcoach.com you'll see in the bottom right hand corner there's a little microphone you can click there Leave your message. If you have a website, be sure to mention that so we can plug it. It's askthepodcastcoach.com. So we'll ask. We'll see if we get any. Uh, if it doesn't work, then I'll basically have uh, Jim's daughter leave a message and prime the pump. And, and uh, hey, this question's for Jim. What's for dinner tonight? You know, whatever it is. Uh, something Who's like the best podcaster ever? <laughs> I just wanted to know. <laughs> so that'll be it. You can do that sometimes to prime the pump and uh, and get it going. But just a reminder, we are not here, uh, you know, 
next week. Next week, I'll be at Podcast Movement. Actually, I'll be coming back from Podcast Movement. So, what's that, um, what's that yeah. day for folks who lift? That's the twenty seventh of August. August, yeah. No live show. Twenty seventh. No live show. I will be uh, hopefully sleeping still, in. Yeah, healthy yeah. and um, COVID free is the goal. I want to come home cool. COVID free. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Got, that, that's I'm one sorry. of the things on my list today. I have to go buy COVID tests because I'm hope I'm probably going to take one when I get home. And I was yeah. like, you should go order the free ones. I think UP, USPS still has free tests available oh, that you can go. order. By the time they arrive, it will be about the time you get back and you need to use them. Yeah, I will definitely be doing that. So, uh, you know, it's not, wait, Gabriel says, I, I was going to go to Podcast Move, but, but I can't face Florida again. It's in Texas. It's in Dallas. Dallas. Uh, yeah, there's Podcast Movement. That's in Dallas. Podfest is always in uh, Florida for whatever reason. Chris loves Florida. I, you know, I do too. It's in January, by the way. They announced that. The next in-person Podfest is in January. I want to say January 23rd, maybe something. It's in January. It's coming around. They do have a uh, a virtual one coming up as well. So, Jim, speaking of what's coming up... Yeah. Uh, What's coming up on the average guy.tv? So out there on Home Gadget Geeks, we have Aaron Lawrence. We talked a little bit about uh, these new framed TVs that look like picture frames that you can you can put hang on the wall and it's art when you want it to be art and it's a TV when you want it to be a TV. We also spent some time oh talking about monitors and barbecue gadgets. We spent a bunch of time talking about barbecue gadgets. So uh, Home Gadget Geeks, it'll post a little bit later today, homegadgetgeeks.com. On Ask, the, on Ask the Podcast Coach, on the School of Podcasting, I'm interviewing Holistic Hilda. She has an awesome because of my podcast story. We'll see you in two weeks, everybody. Take care.